Hello and welcome everyone to our latest review. This is a study that is no sedation or light sedation in critically ill mechanically ventilated patients. This study was published in NEJM in February 16th. So as we all know, uh, most of the guidelines, they recommend to sedate any patient who is on mechanical ventilation. And the protocol of awakening the patient daily has been proven to be beneficial in most of the trials that have been published. So the recent practice in most of the ICUs is to sedate the patients and give them sedation vacations daily and see that they awake. Now, this particular group of authors, they did a study prior in which they looked at a protocol of using no sedation for critically ill patients on mechanical ventilation. It was a single center study done in Denmark with 428 patients. In this, they concluded that no sedation of critically ill patients receiving mechanical ventilation was associated with an increase in days without ventilation. Now, encouraged by this single centered study, the authors went on to do a multicentric trial. So this particular study is the study which is a continuation of this particular study and it, this time they have done it in multiple centers, in fact in multiple countries. So let's look at the methods. Uh, this was a study done in Denmark, Norway and Sweden, five centers from Denmark, two from uh, Norway and one from Sweden were included in this particular study. The trial was funded by the Danish Medical Research Council, Danielson Foundation and the Scandinavian Society of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care. There was no industry involvement in the trial, quite obviously, because no sedation was the intervention group. Now, let's see who the patients selected. Patient with age 18 years or more with endotracheal intubation within 24 hours before screening and expected to receive mechanical ventilation for 24 hours were included in this trial. Those who were excluded were patients with severe head trauma, therapeutic hypothermia, status epilepticus who have participated in a previous trial, transferred from other ICU, comatose patient, brain dead patient or ARDS patients. So mostly any patients in whom there was a requirement for higher sedation or who had already spent a time in a different ICU were excluded from this trial. Now what were the trial interventions? The patients in the non-sedation group did not receive any sedative but could receive bolus doses of morphine for analgesia as seemed necessary by the treating team. If it became necessary to sedate a patient, the patients would be given the same medications and similar to the sedation group. And the most important thing that we need to know is, is that there was a 1 is to 1 nursing patient ratio in most of the participating ICUs. Now the patients in the sedation group received a continuous infusion of sedatives with the goal of achieving light sedation. That is, to the level at which the patient was arousable, which is usually defined by minus 2 to minus 3 on a RAS scale. So they targeted the sedation to minus 2 to minus 3 on a RAS scale. Propofol was to be used for sedation in the first 48 hours and was to be replaced by medazolam if it was required to sedate the patient beyond 48 hours. Patients were given a sedation vacation every morning check for awakening and if not to be extubated they were started on a half the dose of sedation that was going on if no signs of agitations were seen the use of dexmedetomidine was to be avoided in all the patients analgesia was same in both the groups either opioids paracetamol or epidurals to be used it was same for both the groups Delirium was to be tested by CAM ICU twice daily, that is at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And DVT was to be given as per the institutional protocols. Now, 
coming to the primary outcome the primary outcome of this particular trial was the 90 days mortality after randomization so let's look at the sample size calculation it was done based on this trial which we showed previously in this mechanically ventilated icu patients had a mortality of 36% in non sedation group and 47% in the sedation group and they estimated a 5% type 1 error and 20% type 2 error and they found that uh, they needed around 350 in each group to have 80% power and to show 25% absolute reduction in the risk of death if they wanted to show the difference between the two groups. Now let's see how the study went on. Totally 2,300 patients were assessed for eligibility. Out of these, almost 1,600 were excluded. So a large number of patients were excluded. Almost 1,200 patients did not meet the inclusion criteria and various other in exclusions can also be seen. So ultimately 710 patients underwent randomization. 354 were assigned to the non-sedation group and 356 were assigned to the sedation group. Let's look at the baseline characteristics. The uh, mean age was around 70. The female percentage was around 36 to 40%. Apache score was mean 25 to 26. So far was 7 to 8. The most common cause of admission was medical nearly 70% surgical and acute surgical were around 30 percent the most common diagnosis on admission was again pneumonia or ARDS followed by sepsis now this is what the study achieved the difference between the two groups we see in the blue line the sedation that we find in the sedation group that is roughly between minus 2 to minus 3 and in the non-sedation group the sedation is around minus sedation score is around minus one so finally this is what they found the difference between the two groups uh, we, the all-cause mortality at day 90 was 42 percent in the non-sedation group and 37 percent in the sedation group the point to be noted here is that even though the non-sedation group had a lower mortality in the previous trial in this particular trial the non sedation group has a 5% higher mortality though this particular difference has no statistical significance all the rest things are almost similar between the two groups not much difference and quite similar not even the number of days without ventilation is 20 19 hardly any difference between the two groups now let's look at the adverse effects uh, an incidence of extubation leading to reintubation within 1 hour occurred in uh, four patients in the non-sedation group and one patient in the sedation group. If the time limit was increased to 24 hours, then it was statistically uh, significant with almost 31 patients, that is 9% of the patients requiring reintubation in the non-sedation group while only 14 patients required reintubation in the sedation group. Even the accidental removal of equipments like NG tube, art line, central line was significantly higher in the non-sedation group, almost 15% compared to 9%. The no sedation group had a higher requirement of morphine in the first three days. And the sedation group received more propofol and midazolam. However, the point that is very, very important is almost 27% of patients who were in no sedation group, they received sedation in the first 24 hours because of the various reasons like uh, delirium, agitation and all. So the author's conclusion is that among the mechanically ventilated ICU patients, mortality at day 90 did not differ significantly between those assigned to a plan of no sedation than those assigned to a plan of light sedation with daily interruption. So basically what they wanted to show is that if you give sedation or you do not give sedation, there is no difference in the two groups. Let's look at the strengths. The strength is that it's a multicentric multinational trial. So 
can be quite generalized. It has a very strong methodology and the a priori publication of trial protocol and statistical plan. But the limitation is again this the difference between the two groups after this particular protocol has been implemented is very very slim the mean sedation is around minus one in the non-sedation group and minus two in the sedation group this is the ras score if we see the scoring minus one and minus two it is just a difference of opinion with whether it was more than 10 seconds or less than 10 seconds even the difference is very very different small between the two groups so the most important limitation is the difference between the two groups in terms of sedation was very very less the others one are uh, mortality as an endpoint in a sedation trial doesn't make much of sense because frankly speaking we do not expect people to die because of sedation and even with such small difference we do not really expect a huge mortality difference between the groups and as we have already pointed out the mortality seems to have reversed in the previous trial the mortality in the non-sedation group was less and we were expecting a mortality difference with a benefit in towards no sedation while in this particular trial we find 5% high mortality in no sedation group what non-pharmacological methods were used in place of sedation have not been described the fact that one is to one nursing was used is again doesn't make this study very generalizable because i don't think one is to one nursing is very prevalent in most of the icus in the world and definitely not in india where we do not have one is to one nursing and uh, no evaluation of the nursing workload has been done we do not find any uh, assessment of how the nursing workload has been assessed how much more work they had to do or where they comfortable with no sedation group how comfortable they were if the patients were no not sedated what was their workload even with one is to one nursing that was not really assessed and the difference has not been shown in this particular trial now the other thing is the emotional the psychological trauma a patient would go if they remain awake during these periods should have been assessed again not done so uh, the non sedated patients later on what were their emotional and psychological impact we do not really know so does this study change my practice definitely not uh, the safety of no sedation isn't established by no effect on mortality because as we said it is unlikely that a sedation given during the first three four days is going to have a mortality impact it really has a uh, more impact on the psychology and the emotional part of the patient and which was again not assessed in this particular trial and we cannot ignore the fact that there was a higher complication rate rather a significantly higher complication rate in the no sedation group and a higher mortality also though not statistically significant so light sedation is what we practice in our icu with daily sedation interruptions and we will continue to do so this particular study does not give us uh, confidence to not sedate our patients who are on mechanical ventilation thank you and watch our website for further information thanks a lot